UAE put on a pacing masterclass whilst Visma Lisa Bike unveil a pretty radical helmet design this was the team time trial in paris nice 27 kilometers long they go south where it's slower through a hilly area below Auxerre, and then come back on a really fast run into town it is harder than the tt last year and pacing would be very difficult in team dependence and remember from last year the special rules for this tt the first rider of each team gets sets the time for the stage win and then every rider gets their own time so special rules it means you didn't have to wait till for four riders for the finish astana set a pretty good early mark under sunny conditions there was rain later in the day so the earlier teams did have an advantage Lushenko leading out to harder they averaged over 50 kilometers an hour so not the quickest tt then uae team emirates they were the biggest team in an early slot and their pacing plan was clear Pollitt did about the first 10 minutes and then pulled off as the hill zone started. And there's a right to left crosswind as well, uh, particularly in that hill zone earlier. Then Groschartner whacked, I believe, the first uh, one of the first hills at the base of the second hill. He pulls off and now they've got five riders left, but they're all good time trialers. Soler, Vine, McNulty, Almeida, Finn, Fisher, Black, particularly in a team time trial context, all actually quite similar profiles of rider. And Vine and McNulty just went one and two in the UAE Tour individual time trial on the flat uh, with Bjerg se- uh, third. So 1K to go, they keep all those five riders together. Soler does his last pull under the Flamme Rouge before Finn, Fisher, Black launches it up the little uphill drag with the four riders they're hoping to keep in GC. Almeida comes through into second. They all get the same time. No gap between Almeida and McNulty in third. And so UAE went into the hot seat, setting the early mark. The next good team in a team time trial, they're always good in this discipline. Jaco Alula, they came third last year. Uh, They got Plapp here as their GC man. Durbridge, Harper, and Matthews are also good in this discipline, but they're down to four at the intermediate time check. They're just behind UAE team emirates but remember uae had five riders for the last uh, 14 kilometers or so and jaco have to keep those together with four and then matthew sprints for the stage win just not enough Ineos next uh, they got all the gear they've got bernal and rodriguez probably the weakest two time trialing gc contenders that they've got to protect on this hilly course uh, there's De Plus, Castroviejo, Freyla, and of course Josh Tarling, probably the, if not the best, the second best time trial rider in the world, but he was struggling on in the hilly zone, it seemed, and they're just a bit behind UAE Tim Emirates, but they got numbers. They've kept their super rouleau, they're, they're four seconds back, but surely that means they can catch up, but then 2.3Ks to go, they've still got seven riders, so they this they were the team that kept the most riders deep into the final a uh, couple of Ks. No other team had seven with two 2.5 k's to go but it, it wasn't enough they eventually uh with f- still having five riders just about four riders with 200 meters left set a time 22 seconds behind uae so they lost time to them in the final run in ef they were thir- second here last year again a great team in the team time trial discipline they are 20 seconds back as well trek Jasper Sturvin, oh, just left hanging by Julien Bernard. But he comes back, he comes back, bang, saves it, no problem. But the TT itself wasn't a good day for Little Trek. They lost a lot of time. Schelmers is here for GC. They won't be happy with that. Quick step, Remco Evenepoel, they won the UAE TTT last year. Vavaka dropped early to in 10 minutes, and then you got this fast run into the hill area, and they were looking good. Six riders, 17 seconds quicker than UAE at T1, but the weather turned. The weather turned on them. They got rain on the pitch, and the corners got wet. The final sort of false flat downhill was slower. Remco seemed to be struggling in the final 500 meters as well. He couldn't really come over the top of Van Wilder, who looks like he almost waits for him, and they finished 20 seconds back behind UAE. Bora in the same time slot for them, unfortunately dryish earlier, but they had a bit of a disaster. Five riders in that fast downhill section in the first 10 minutes or 12 Ks or so of the TTT, and it got worse for them with Bob Jungles uh, as Roglic starts his pull on one of the hills, pulling off. That's him done. They're down to four riders, and then uh, Roglic keeps pulling, and before the intermediate time check, they lose Marco Haller. 
We've got Vlasov, Sobrero, Roglic. They're good time trial riders, but Vlasov looks back. We've got the false flat downhill coming. Hull is like a powerful ruler, and they press on without him. The only team to go to the intermediate time check with three riders. They went quick to it. Four seconds behind quick step. That's ahead of UAE Team Emirates, but they gave all that time back on and more in the quick section because with three riders you basically have 50 percent of the time you're in the wind just about so Roglic despite his patented sprint at the end they have a disappointing TT 55 seconds back and we saw this in Torreno in the flat TT yesterday Matteo Jorgensen sitting there trying to play it cool like he don't he doesn't have that helmet on his head like it's totally normal uh but they, they got the new I don't know what the official name for the helmet is I call it the shark helmet it's even prompted it's gonna buzz on social media it's prompted the UCI to issue a press release saying they're looking into it and we'd see how fast it was or how much it would help uh Visma Lisa bike in this race they had the Van Dyke brothers Kelderman, uh, Cohen Bowman, as well as Coy the Sprinter in the white jersey. But Jorgensen's the man on GC down at T1. And with the weather conditions, we knew that things wouldn't get better going into the final. So UAE didn't have too much to worry about. They finished in sixth at that point, well back of the mark. And so with them done, quick step done, it was only Lawrence Pithy and FDJ standing in the way, perhaps aided by Divine Forces, to beat UAE Team Emirates in this time trial, but it wasn't to be, despite a good lead out for Gudu trying to save his GC time. UAE Team Emirates win the TT. Perfect plan. Great squad for this TT, and they executed it really, really well. Deservedly winning the TT by 15 seconds ahead of Jayco, 20 seconds ahead of EF Education. Easy post. Yes, there was the weather change, but sometimes that's the way it goes. Here's what Finn Fisher Black had to say after the stage. You were the first to cross the line, so you get the, the interview. Uh, you must be very happy with this performance it's a team performance and it's also always very special yeah definitely i love this discipline and uh yeah this team we knew we were a strong team coming into it everyone is kind of pretty good at tt in, in uh, this team so yeah we knew we had a good shot at the at the win and we were fortunate to have pretty good weather as well so uh yeah, to, to take the win like this is really really cool yeah you talked about the weather that made a big difference you, you didn't have a drop of rain yeah i'm not gonna lie and say like uh it didn't make a difference for sure it, you know the rain came and uh, we came just before it and for sure it was beneficial for us everything was perfect we were just talking how like we don't actually think we could have gone faster in any section and uh yeah we were thinking before the start it would be good if i can do the sprint at the end it suits me this kind of climb so uh mark took us into the last kilometer and i i went into the corner first and just launched from the bottom. McNulty goes into the leader's jersey because of uh, stage placements, but he's on the same time as his four, uh, three teammates, Fisher, Black, Almeida, and Vine. Plap is on 15 seconds, even Paul on 18, Bernal on 20 seconds. With Roglic further back, he's going to have to attack if he wants to win this race. This Paranese isn't over yet. I'm really excited for it, and I'll see you with the recap of the Mont Bruy stage tomorrow. Until then, ciao.